So let's jump into the heat exchange system. Now, you're probably well aware of the ideal gas law, which states that pressure and volume are directly related to temperature. PV equals NRT, or pervert equals inert. Shout out to my high school chemistry teacher for that one. Now essentially what this means is, as your pressure goes up, aka boost, your temperature goes up as well. Now the LSA uses an electric pump to pump coolant and water between the supercharger itself and a heat exchanger up front. So just like with your engine, you've got a water pump. In this case, it's electrical, not belt driven. You've got a radiator. In this case, it's a little bit smaller. And you've got a heat source rather than the engine itself. This is uh, the supercharger. Now, a quick overview of my system. I've got an AFCO heat exchanger, which is an aftermarket replacement for the ZL1 Camaro. I've also got a stock ZL1 coolant pump. And then I've got a small Canton coolant tank, which holds just about two quarts of water. Now, in addition to that, I've also got about 10 feet of three quarter inch hose running between everything. So here is my AFCO heat exchanger. Now, the reason that I chose this, it's about 31 inches wide. It's also about 11 inches tall. Now, I have air conditioning, so um, in order to make this work, I actually had to move my condenser for my vintage air air conditioning. You can kind of see that in the background over here. You can see a couple of the lines. Uh, from the factory, vintage air actually sticks that condenser out. So I had to flip around one of the brackets and then fab up my own lower bracket and push it into the core support. Now, when I was doing some research, I looked into the size of the heat exchanger uh, and I thought, hey, two and a half inches thick, did some measurements, even with my uh, vintage air condenser that I've got in there, I could still fit it between the grill and the condenser itself. Well, it turns out this thing's actually three inches thick. So all of my measurements that I took were for naught. Why is that? Here's the grill on my Nova. Now you can't really see, but right here where the grill would bolt up to the radiator support, can't fit it there. There's about a half an inch or so. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm actually going to have to go in cut a couple of notches on both sides of this grill in order to make it fit. This is the price you pay for horsepower, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if I didn't have vintage air, it is very well possible that I could move this back that half inch, three quarters of an inch or so, and make it work with that grill. Unfortunately, I live in the literal inferno of Phoenix. And in the summertime, yes, I do drive in the summertime, I blast that AC. So this is absolutely necessary for me to have air conditioning because nine months out of the year, I'm using it. Uh, and even though this is an old car, I still try and drive it as much as possible, even though it actually physically pains me to do so in the summertime. Now, one last thing. I've had an aftermarket hood on this thing for about 20 years. You can actually see where the hood pins go right there. Now, I couldn't tell you what the hood latch looks like, but I can almost guarantee you it's not going to fit with this heat exchanger. Um, that unfortunately is something that you're gonna have to find out. But again, that's something to think about if you're going with a supercharged application. You might have to do some cutting. You might have to do uh, something else. You might have to go with a cool aftermarket hood. I don't know, something like that. So keep that in mind as well. That said, would I use this AFCO heat exchanger if uh, I could do it all over again? I would not. Not even for my application, not even the fact that I move things around and, and have no problem um, cutting and fitting and cutting and fitting and doing all of that. I would much rather find a smaller heat exchanger that's not so thick. However, like I mentioned, I live in the literal inferno and having a massive heat exchanger was something that's very important to me. So that's something to consider if you happen to do this swap on your own Nova. I should also mention, I have a pretty big radiator in this thing. Uh, I actually have a 31 inch by 19 inch radiator, which is about the biggest that you can fit in a Nova between the stock frame rails. And the reason that I have that is I live in the Inferno and it gets over a hundred degrees every day from about May through October. I still want to drive this thing even when it's a hundred degrees outside. I have air conditioning. I have a massive radiator. I have a big electric fan. 
and now I've got a big heat exchanger to keep my IATs down even when it's hot as hell. So here's the Canton tank that I bought. As I mentioned, this holds about two quarts, six and a half inches tall by about four and a half inches wide by about four and a half inches deep. Now Canton sells a cap for this, or you can use a uh, Ford Mustang GT from like 2008 or so cap. This was $7, the Canton cap was like 28. So you can see there are two brass fittings. One of them's 90 degree, one of them is a straight brass fitting. Both of these have half inch pipe thread and three quarter inch hose barb. You can see the bottom goes to, you can't really see it, but my coolant pump down here, where it then goes from here to my heat exchanger through the core support. And then this, this line comes from the heat exchanger out to the supercharger lid and the circle of life continues. So I hope that gives you a good overview of the LSA heat exchange system. You know, it's not terribly involved. You've got the lid itself, which is part of the supercharger. You've got a coolant pump, you've got a tank. If you wanna have a tank, I highly recommend that. And then you've also got the heat exchanger at the front of the car, uh, and then just a bunch of uh, three quarter inch hose. I do, however, recommend you look at something other than that Canton tank and that heat exchanger that I bought if you're putting this into a Nova. Now, the Canton tank was about $150 for me through Scog and Dickey. Um, I looked and looked and looked and I just couldn't find anything else that looked like it would work. I did find one other thing from another vendor, uh, but it was discontinued and I wasn't able to find it again. I think it was actually another Canton pan, but I can't remember the part number. Um, anyways, I highly recommend you go to the Canton website, you go to the AFCO website, check out CX Racing, just try and find small radiators, um, something that you can fit at the front of the car. Measure thrice, cut once. Or in my case, measure once, and then end up cutting anyways. It's just up to you. So that's all I got for today's video. Next up, I've got the cam swap that I did. I've got the uh, Trunnion upgrade that I did with the cam swap, so I'll be dropping that soon. I'll also be getting into the accessory drive. And finally, we're just about ready to fire, and I can't wait. Catch you next time.